Well, welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on today's show, somewhat of a bombshell came down just a handful of days ago, at least somewhat of a smaller bombshell, and that is that we're going to have a brand new Top Gear that's going to be coming out very, very soon. The BBC has kind of been in that state of flux over the past several years after the Clarkson May Hammond era ended. The trick is, is there's a ton of Top Gear fans that will only think of it as Clarkson May and Hammond and still are screaming out, which I can't believe so many folks are still screaming out that they need to bring those three guys back and that will absolutely never happen. I can absolutely guarantee it unless there's some sort of uh, change as far as the BBC is concerned, but the trick is Clarkson killed that when he punched that guy. That's just all there is to it. Workplace violence is something that no company is going to have to deal with, and that's uh, that's the reason why that deal ended. But we're living in this particular era now, and we've gone through what now? This will be our third generation just in the past couple of years. As Matt LeBlanc, who kind of took over the season 2.01, maybe, version of Top Gear after the Chris Evans era kind of crashed and burned, LeBlanc, basically, it's way too much travel for him. I mean, he lives here stateside, and that much travel, even though they did a lot of the filming right here in the United States, uh, basically was just too much for him, so that's basically the reason why. And the trick is he's a really big star, so it was tricky to be in this particular program. I think that's really what the BBC has done wrong. I know they want to get some big-name folks involved, but man, oh man, you really got to be careful with that because... These folks got a lot of other pro uh, programs going on and a lot of other projects going on. And it's really tricky for them to stick to this deal because it re does require a pretty fantastic amount of commitment. Now, let's get to these three guys. Obviously, the one furthest from me is the guy that we've known for quite some time, Chris Harris. He's fantastic. I love him, especially in this particular role. So... I'm really pleased that he's going to be back. A little bit bummed that Rory Reed will be gone, even though he will come back to the Extra Gear program, which I thought he was brilliant at. He was the real bright spot, I thought, in the Chris Evans era. That whole Extra Gear was really entertaining, and Rory Reed really made it really good. But a little bummed that he's not going to be in the main cast anymore, even though I think you might see a smattering of them here and there. But let's get to the new guys. The guy in the middle is one Patty McGinnis. He's a comic, he's done movies, he's done television and whatnot. So this guy, I've seen one interview with him, and he seemed charming and funny. I think he might fit in really, really well. The real guy that I kind of had a question mark was, is he's an ex-cricket player. The guy who's closest to me, this is one Andrew Flintoff. Now, Mr. Flintoff has done a bunch of television interview-style stuff and whatnot, and I've seen one interview with him... Again, charming, funny, he may fit in quite well. We all know that this particular situation, it's all about the chemistry side of things. And I really thought that Matt LeBlanc, Rory Reed, Chris Harris, I think they really kind of gelled together and made the last season of Top Gear really, really good. Now, let's get to the actual timing of this situation, which I thought was probably the most interesting. Because season 26... Hasn't even been out yet. The last season for the Matt LeBlanc era. In fact, I don't even think they've fully filmed that yet. And that could be the situation as this. I wonder if they're going to try to bring these guys in a little bit in season 26 to kind of get you warmed up to these guys actually being part of the program in season 27. The trick is, too, it's a long ways off. They're not even talking about filming season 27 till late 2019. So it won't even be until 2020 sometime in the year there that we'll even get to see these three in action. So it's going to be pretty interesting. There'll definitely be a wait and see moment to see just how quickly these guys get that chemistry together and see if they can bring back some of that Top Gear magic. Next up on the list, Audi showing off the heavily refreshed, sadly not fully redesigned, Audi R8. I know I got a lot of folks that watch this particular program that are really upset with Audi of basically keeping this same automobile for this long. But here we are again with another refresh. Gone are a little bit some of the jaded kind of sections that they kind of try to get away from that more curvy as the original R8 actually was. This thing I think looks super aggressive. It looks nice. Basically the front end, the rear end get a little bit of treatment. The interior is going to remain the same. A lot of the other hard parts are going to remain the same. 
in this particular vehicle. Even the 5.2 liter normally aspirated V10 remains the same. It does get a little bump up in power to 570 horsepower and 406 pounds feet of torque. That'll take this vehicle to 62 in just 3.4 seconds with a top speed of 201 miles an hour. Now, if you want to bump that up a tad bit, you can go for the V10 Plus option, which bumps up that 5.2 liter now to making 620 horsepower, 428 pounds-feet of torque. Zero to 60 dips down to 3.1 seconds with a top speed of 205 miles an hour. Now, they're going to make this in, obviously, the hardtop and the spider version, which will be coming down the pike just in a tan full of months' time. They haven't talked exactly about pricing or availability as of yet, so we'll definitely keep you in tune once we hear that information. And last up on the list, this is kind of one of those situations where it was kind of a perfect storm in a way. I witnessed a television ad that's been running here stateside about the brand new hatchback version of the Toyota Corolla. And it seemed to be somewhat of a crazy television ad with a group of young people flopping all over the place, getting in somewhat mischief. Even one of the people looks like they end up breaking their arm in a fall because they later on they have a cast on. And they're also obviously driving this car in freakish reckless abandonment action, drifting the car and sliding it about. And I kept sitting there thinking, you know what? We live in a world now where, like, one top, very, very popular morning radio uh, host actually says all the time is that there's a lot of people on this planet that get up every morning and think, what do I get offended by today that I want to get upset and scream and yell about? And that's when I started thinking about this TV ad. I know there's somebody out there somewhere thinking, you know what, you can't show this car doing the things that it's doing, and it's just one of those parts of the world that we live in now. Then, fast forward about six, seven hours later, when I see a report out that the UK is basically slapping the hands and banning TV ads for hand different manufacturers, including FCA, who made a brand new advert for the brand new Abarth 500 and the Abarth 124, where the car is screaming all over the place and flopping all over the place and drifting about and whatnot, and they basically ban the ad saying you cannot show this particular situation in action and their cars are way too aggressively driven. Now the trick is, this is not new. I mean, this has been around for hundreds of years. Lawyers getting involved, actually telling companies that they can't show different adverts here and there. So it'll be interesting to see where we go from here. But really, what do you do with a performance car if you can't show it running about very aggressively? And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. Links down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time. Get the first dibs in the brand new show as soon as they come out. I'm heading off to another car auction. So there's going to be some more car auction coverage. It's going to be coming up in the next several days, if not a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.